And here Joseph, when he sees his brothers, slaughter an animal, prepare a meal, bring him to my house so that I can dine with them. I also think here of the way that Jesus responded to Peter when Peter denied the Lord after the resurrection. Jesus sought out Peter specifically. Remember, he said, tell the disciples, I'll see them in Galilee and tell Peter. And then in Galilee, Jesus sought out Peter. And what did Jesus do? He prepared a meal for him there on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And it says that Jesus served Peter a meal. And that's when Jesus, of course, said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. And he he restored Peter over a meal. You know, Revelation chapter three, Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and I will dine with him and he with me. Jesus says, I'm, I'm, I'm at the door knocking. I want you to open the door of your heart. I want you to invite me into your life and I'll come into your life and I'll dine with you. We'll have fellowship together. We'll, we'll sit down at the table and we'll commune together. And here is Joseph, a picture of Jesus. And Joseph longed to have fellowship with his brothers and to commune with his brothers. And so Joseph, when he sees his brothers, before his brothers apologize, before his brothers make it right, he just sees his brothers and he tells his steward, take these men to my house and slaughter an animal and prepare it so we can dine together at noon. I want you to think about this. Remember, the brothers, they, they don't know it's, it's Joseph. And there are people from all over the Mediterranean world and Middle East in Egypt buying food. And Jacob's sons are the only ones that are picked out of the crowd and invited to the prime minister's house for a special meal with the prime minister. Imagine if that happened to you. Right. Imagine you're at, you know, Wegmans this afternoon and you get invited to the White House. Right. And just imagine what that would be like. It'd be pretty awesome, pretty mind blowing. You would be texting your friends. You would never believe where I am right now. You'd be sending pictures of you at Joseph's palace. You know, hashtag blessed, hashtag God's favorite, all that kind of stuff. Right. Amazing. I can't believe this is happening. This is so crazy. God's so good. But Jacob's sons were afraid. And I want you to get this. They were afraid to go to Joseph's house. Look at verse 18. Now the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, it is because of the money which was returned in our sacks the first time that we are brought in so that he may make a case against us and seize us to take us as slaves with our donkeys. They think, He's just bringing us into his house because of the money from the first trip. And he's just bringing us here so he can make a case against us, present his case, seize us, sell us into slavery, sell our donkeys into slavery, too. You know, interestingly, that's exactly what they did to Joseph years before. They seized him. They sold him into slavery and 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 they fear that they will be treated the same way they treated Joseph. They think the prime minister is just like them. And it's going to treat them the way that they've treated others. And sometimes that's how people think about God, isn't it? That God's just like us. And God's going to treat me the way that I, I've treated people. And, you know, there's some Christians that when they sin, they become afraid to come into the presence of Jesus. They don't want to be around Jesus. And, and they think, well, I, I've blown it. Now Jesus is angry with me. He's going to seize me. He's going to enslave me. He's going to punish me for what I did. He's going to let me have it. Jesus isn't like you. He's not like me. Praise the Lord. We might do that to other people. We might punish people for doing us wrong. But Jesus isn't like us. But some some Christians, they, they become afraid to come into the presence of Jesus. They don't they don't want to be around Jesus or they're, they're afraid to 
to come into his house. Joseph says, bring him to my house. I want him in my house so I can have a meal with them, so I can have fellowship and commune with them. And they're afraid to go into Joseph's house. And there's some Christians that they they sin. They become afraid to go into the house of the Lord. Afraid to go to church. Afraid to be around other believers. Some even become afraid to come to the Lord's table. And take communion together with them. They think, well, I can't have communion. I can't take the bread and the cup after what I've done. Listen, give me your attention. The opposite is true. (laughs) The opposite is right. When we sin, when we fail, when we blow it, that's when we need to come into the Lord's presence. That's that's when we need to be around the body of Christ. That's when we should come to the Lord's table and take communion and remember his sacrifice and remember his shed blood and his broken body that takes away all our sins. Jesus invites us into his house and to his table not to punish us. Not to seize us and make a case against us. But to forgive us. And to cleanse us of all of our sin. Do you see? Do you see the grace of our Lord in this? When we sin, when we blow it, he says, Come into my house. Come to my table. Take and eat of the bread and the cup and do this in remembrance of me. I've I've died for your sins. I paid for that sin. It's under the blood. 